The fifth update dropped. Everyone's wondering on whether or not the update will be good because it only adds two monsters. But here I am thinking, is it actually possible to beat Omatsu without breaking any parts? So when I was experiencing it for the first time, I was testing the waters to see what I was dealing with. I will tell you one thing, now that I'm fighting Omatsu, I am now realizing how hard the challenge I have planned is going to be. Needless to say, I was expecting this to be very hard. Dare I say almost impossible. So the parts that break on Omatsu are the head, back, arms, and tail. And the parts that don't break are the chest and hind legs. So I would need a weapon that would target only those two parts for the entirety of the hunt. I couldn't use the charge blade, I couldn't use the switch axe either, because both of them have long reach. So I decided to go with the sword and shield because it has a shorter range, and I can stay under the monster fairly often. So with this in mind, I readied my gear and went after Omatsu. I was doing okay hitting the underside, but I found myself hitting the head way more times than I should have. Now because of this, I was bound to break the head at some point and that would come pretty soon oh wait what what did i break his head no oh i decided to try again and this time i did a little bit better and i even got to the second phase but i kept hitting the arms which worried me and eventually this happened wait what no no well, it was time for a new strategy. I decided on the hammer because it just meant one less part to break, which is the tail. But despite the inability to hit the tail, I found myself hitting way more breakable parts, and it didn't exactly help that there was a slope that caused me to do aerial attacks on it, further increasing the chances of breaking something. This, of course, caused me to break part after part after part, and this all happened in three attempts. It was clear that the hammer just wasn't cutting it, and the sword and shield was the actual good option, but I needed a more optimal solution, and that solution is poison. Now, the only downside with poison is that the more often a monster gets poisoned, the more it starts to resist it, therefore the harder it becomes to inflict the status. So to combat this, I applied the status effect boost on the sword and shield to get more poison, added venom decos for poison attack level 3, then I ate dongo specialist at level 4, further increasing the poison's potency. Now here I thought, oh, I have a poison weapon, I'm for sure ready to do this, but as soon as I poisoned the matsu and let the status take its course, Course, I quickly found something else that would be bad news. Oh wow, the poison does not last. I didn't realize the poison wouldn't last so long. Now I found this strange because in GU, the poison is a lot more effective on Amatsu and lasts longer, at least as far as I remember. But despite this, I kept going. Then I grabbed something that would further increase the pressure of this hunt. Oh my gosh, I better not lose this. If I lose this, I... <laughs> This mantle is gone. Now I'm obligated to win. Because of this, I tried putting it in the high gear, but sadly, I was hitting too many breakable parts and I wasn't dealing enough overall damage, which eventually led to this. <gasps> no! No, 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 no. Okay, so what happened here was I broke the part, which meant I failed and had to abandon, but I didn't even think about the mantle I grabbed, which I could have kept if I had let time run out. So after that, I tried looking for other options, but then found something that would be even more helpful, which is Camellia's Blessing Level 3. Now, this skill at Level 3 extends the duration of your poison's effect on monsters, which is great because the poison doesn't last long on a Matsu, so this would be helpful there. But I only had enough Rise Gems to make two of them, so I had to hunt Risen Camellios to get enough rise gems to craft the third haze deco. But I ended up crafting four because I thought I would need negate wind pressure. You'll see why that's important later. <laughs> At this point, I thought about making the dual blades. The reason I thought about making dual blades here is because for one, just like the sword and shield, they have a shorter range, which means I'm less likely to hit breakable parts, but it also means I can inflict poison much faster. So I crafted them for now, but would only use them if the attempt with the sword and shield didn't pan out. This time, I was sure I would beat it because I would be more aggressive. I was able to poison it more often, but sadly, I kept hitting breakable parts, and eventually, this happened. <gasps> oh no! Once again, I broke something on accident, so after that fail, I went with the dual blades. This time, I was ready to beat Amatsu and keep him intact. 
but there was another problem that I ran into. Because I was a little too cautious, there was only one move on the dual blades that I kept using just so I wouldn't risk breaking anything. Little did I know, it dealt little damage and as a result, time ran out. See, I knew the dual blades were a good option, so I needed to use more moves if I was to beat this challenge. But before I tried again, there was one skill that I needed to add to the set, and that skill was Coalescence. This skill would allow me to increase the potency of my poison when recovering from the water blight that Amatsu inflicts. So you remember the fourth haste deco that I crafted even though I didn't need it? That last one caused me to use the last Camellius Rise Gem, which I needed for this deco. So this meant I had to hunt Risen Camellius again in order to get the last Rise Gem needed. But after hunting Risen Camellius again, I got the Rise Gem and crafted the Phoenix Plus 4 deco. Then I thought about my buddies. I originally didn't bring them because they would eventually break something. But then I thought, if they only use blunt weapons with poison, as well as their behavior and gear changed a bit, maybe they're useful after all. So I changed their gear and behavior, gave them poisonous picnic baskets, and attempted Amatsu again. And this time, it was going way better than expected. Amatsu was getting poisoned a lot, and there was no parts breaking so far. And not to mention, we got to the second phase way faster than the previous attempts. But sadly, the momentum wouldn't last. <gasps> what? No! And this is why I didn't bring buddies in the first place. But something happened here. As soon as I abandoned the quest, my game crashed. Because I don't have autosave turned on, it reverted back to right before crafting the Phoenix plus four jewel. So I would try Amatsu again, but this time I brought only the Palamute because the Palamute does less damage than the Palico. Therefore, it shouldn't break any parts, right? So I tried it again. It was going just as well as last time, but again, just like with last time no! So after that, no more buddies. So I benched my Palamute and decided to go alone. But because I read the patterns a lot better, I was more prepared this time. At this point, I was starting to gain more confidence that I would actually beat this challenge and win. But the further I went into this fight, the more difficult it became not hitting any breakable parts because I was hitting the arm a little bit too much on accident. Because I figured, I'm this far, I can't afford to lose this now. I was getting really worried that I was gonna break the arm, but then the unexpected happened. <gasps> I didn't realize it, but I was hitting the tail more times in this quest than I thought. It's at this point when I was feeling really defeated. Every attempt ended with either breaking something or time running out. I put everything I had into that fight and it still wasn't enough. Amatsu kept moving in ways that caused me to hit parts that I didn't want to hit. This is what I had to say about this whole thing. I can't give up yet. I know this can be done. I just need to do this the right way. I just keep hitting the wrong parts that eventually break. I have to be like on target the entire time. Am I just doing too much damage? Or am I not doing enough damage? <laughs> Ugh. As you can see, I was losing hope. I didn't know what to do at this point. But then I thought of something that I was hesitant about, but I felt was my only option. Going back to hammer, but this time using a poison hammer and only targeting the tail. The main problem with this is that the tail is not a weak point for blunt weapons. But there was a switch skill that I had yet to try and somehow haven't unlocked yet until now. And that switch skill is courage. The only thing I know about this is that it acted like valor hammer but I still needed to get the poison weapon, so I upgraded the Puke tree until I needed afflicted scales, at which point I hunted an afflicted flying snake squirrel and an afflicted Rathian. But this hunt is where I decided to do some testing. First, I brought my dragon hammer with the courage switch skill as well as impact burst, but I also brought followers with me because I wanted to see if they broke parts. So in this hunt, I only went for the legs on Rathian and the tail on Rathian just to see if at all that my followers broke something. At some point in the fight, Rathian's head broke, and I was the only one to break it. Then later on, the wings broke, but again, it was me who broke it. I was starting to think that followers don't break parts,
cards, but I needed to do more testing. But after getting the afflicted scales, I maxed out the poison hammer and saw that it required only one afflicted blood for the status effect boost. So I hunted an afflicted crab again, but then something strange happened here. I managed to beat Damio without breaking any parts. Oh, I didn't break anything here. I wasn't even trying. So at this point, I was convinced that followers didn't break anything. I applied the poison boost to my hammer, which allowed it to get 70 poison. That 70 poison combined with poison attack level 3 and Dongo specialist level 4, I now had a whopping 94 poison. But because I was using the hammer, I needed a way to retain my sharpness, so sadly, I had to sacrifice my stun resistance for speed sharpen and some of my expert decos for protective polish decos. This time, I would bring followers with me. The plan was to only attack the tail on Omatsu so that I could just continuously poison it. But then, as soon as I get into the quest and fight Omatsu and poison it, I noticed how hard it was for me to keep up with it. More annoyingly, it kept hitting me with the tail attack, which I didn't exactly have an answer for. Even worse than that, I had a really hard time trying to hit his tail because he just kept moving. And with how I was being carried by followers, this was not fun. I hardly could keep up with Amatsu. Getting stunned in the quest didn't exactly help either, because if you remember, I sacrificed stun resist for speed sharpen. Now we got to the second phase, and we were doing well if you consider this fun, but the momentum didn't last long because this happened. Wait, what the? What broke? Look at me. I'm nowhere near the head. It looks like I broke the head from hitting the chest area, but no, someone else did. AKA Fiorain right there. Oh my god. Gosh, yeah, I should have done more testing before doing this. Despite how much that attempt sucked, there was one good piece of information I got out of doing that. I was able to hit the chest more accurately. That gave me a little bit of hope. So I would try this again, but this time, no followers, no buddies, just me, myself, and I against Amatsu. <laughs> so I was doing well at the start and got to the second phase, but uh, not long after... Ah, oh, the stupid... In case you weren't paying attention, I broke the arm while trying to go for the chest. But as you can see in slow motion, the arms broke just as he backed up. At this point, I was just considering throwing in the towel. No matter what I did, I couldn't beat it without breaking anything or without the time running out. But deep down, I knew this was possible. I just had to keep trying. And so I decided to attempt Amatsu one last time. If I couldn't beat it here, I was done. I went in expecting to fail, but I would do this knowing that I gave it my best shot. I didn't have the greatest start because I kept hitting the arm a few times. I was frustrated, but I decided to keep going anyway because I knew that this would be my final attempt. I got to the second phase in 13 minutes, just like the last attempt. I was taking advantage of openings so I could hit the chest more often, and whenever I could, I would try to catch up to him quicker by going through the cyclones. I held him down with binders so that I could keep attacking his underside. With how hard it was to keep up with him at times. I was feeling this just wasn't fast enough, but I still kept going. Just after avoiding the super move, I knocked him down so that I could get a big opening here, and I made use of impact burst when I could. At this point, I ran out of potions and had to restock, but I had to do so quickly as not to waste any time. Valstrax had appeared, and thankfully, after he crashed down on Amatsu, didn't break anything. I chose not to wyvern ride it so as not to risk damaging Amatsu's parts. It was getting more and more difficult to maneuver around him, but I had to be patient and wait for openings. I avoided the horizontal huge cyclone, which meant that I was actually getting somewhere in this fight. And then I saw the blue icon. <gasps> he's almost dead! Oh my gosh. Oh, and it's 10 minutes left when he's almost dead. After seeing that, my nerves were at an all-time high. It's at this point where I try to take deep breaths to calm myself from panicking and keep myself from messing up. But if you remember from earlier, I hit the left arm three times and I hit it a little bit more during this whole hunt, which got me really worried because if I hit it any more, it would probably break and this would all be over. I knocked him out of the air in the most epic fashion and had an opening, but he wasn't poisoned yet. Yet. I hit the tail a few times with the courage combo, but again, no poison. Not wanting to mess this up, I started panicking, but immediately started taking deep breaths again. I finally get the poison in, but then I fainted while avoiding an attack. 
this was not good because I was not aware of how much time was left. At this rate, my heart was pounding. I was just hoping that any hit I did would finish off Omatsu. I couldn't afford to just heal. I try to hit him there, thinking I would finish him. I don't. I decide to heal here, but I get hit anyway, and I'm down a half health again, so I'm forced to have to heal again. He's holding still here. I try to go for the hit, try to finish him off, and again, nothing. He's close to dead, and I could feel it. Because of how stressful this was, I tried to give myself some positive affirmations, telling myself how peaceful things will be, how at ease I will be after this is over, but I had to remember, I'm still in the fight. Don't celebrate too early. I had to maneuver around the moves. I was trying to go for a hit there. My stamina's low. I'm trying to get under him so I don't hit that arm, because that arm is very close to breaking. I still don't get it. He's still alive, and I just kept hitting him right here, hoping to finish. I still don't finish it. I asked myself, how is he not dead yet? I've hit him like many times. Times. And that poison that I inflicted earlier just wasn't enough. So I was hoping to poison him again to actually finish him off this time. I missed there, but then finally... Yes! Let's go! Sorry for the voice crack, but we did it! We beat Omatsu without breaking its parts! Oh my god! I'm taking a screenshot. I am sharing this with my friends. Oh my god. Yes! And I got a mantle from it too. Without even breaking anything. Oh my gosh. This is a reclaim. Reclaim. Yes! The relief I felt after finally landing that hit and beating Amatsu, the feeling was just unreal. I was at ease and at peace. This just goes to show that no matter how tough things get for you, don't quit. Because if you keep going, you may be closer to victory than you think. But as hard as it was to beat Amatsu without breaking parts, imagine going through an entire game doing only key quests. You can watch this video next to see what strategies I used to make progress in 4 Ultimate.